おかえり今日は何がしたい Hey there So this is、uh, going to be the first sort of video on a small series where I talk about lighthouse builds for cruisers、uh, My name is Min and today I'll be focusing on the cruiser, German cruiser Hindenburg Now since this is the first sort of video I'll explain what is lighthouse, why you should play lighthouse And how you should play Lighthouse. So, first of all, is what is Lighthouse? Well, if you know what a Lighthouse is in real life, so there's like the, the structure and it has light, large amounts of light coming out of it, usually by bodies of water, guiding sailors in dark areas. That's essentially what it is.、Uh, you're spotted from very long distances and Yeah, you're basically always bought it. That's the point of the build.、Um, so, why are you even doing this though? <laughs> like, why? <laughs> well, there's a skill in the game right now for cruisers called Top Grade Gunner. It makes your reload 8% faster whenever there's a ship within your detectability range. And that range does not, is not just your base range, it's actually your current range, your detect, current detectability range when you're not firing. So, Basically, the range, the concealment range you have all the time without blue. So, for example, right now, the way this Hindenburg is set up, that's 17.9 kilometers. So, why would you do this though?、Um, simply put, there's a bunch of skills in the game that, well, besides top grade, there's other skills that increase your concealment, but also increase your damage output. So, that's the whole point. You want to get as much damage output as possible, but it gains your concealment completely. Alright, so then, okay, so how do you do it? Well, it's pretty simple. <laughs> well, kinda. So you go into your build,、uh, you take like the standard four cruiser stuff that you would normally take. I guess this you could change it to whatever you want. I find engine room to be better, but it depends.、Um, and then you take rudder shift instead of concealment, because you don't want concealment. You can also take legendary if you have it for Hindenburg. I don't have it, so steering gears it is. And then you also you can take reload or range. I take range because Hindenburg stock range is 17 kilometers. And that's really bad when your concealment is 18. Your concealment is higher than your gun range. So with this setup, you get 20 kilometer range, but 18 kilometer concealment. So you have a bit of a buffer, buffer zone. But also, you have flexibility if ships are running away from you. If ships are running away from you, it's very hard to chase them and shoot them when you don't have your spotter up. And with spotter, you get 24 kilometer range, I think. So it gives you much more flexibility when chasing. For ca captain skills, again, top grade gunner is the reason why you run this build, because it gives you 8% better reload. You also take heavy HE and sap shells, because it buffs your HE, so more damage. And it also increases your concealment, which is always nice. The rest of the skills,、um, I would always take Adrenaline Rush. I would always take Priority Target because I find it useful. You don't have to, though. You could take Eye in the Sky, for example. And I would always take IFA, but again, it depends on if you're comfortable without it or not. I like having it because when you're spotted from 18 kilometers away, you can't keep track of who's shooting you all the time. Well, theoretically speaking, everyone's going to shoot you, so it's better to know when they shot. I took Superintendent just to have the extra heal, but Hindenburg gets four heals base, not super important. SC because I'm being shot at all the time, so yeah. Gunfeeder because sometimes there are cases when your AP is better, like broadside targets. And Grease the Gears because it's enhanced by Luchens, and your turret traverse isn't like super fast or anything, so. Might as well. And the reason why you take Luchens is because of this talent here. You hit enemies 140 times with main battery shells, you get a 7.5% reload buff for just having the captain and hitting 140 shells. So, overall, nice to have. Alright, so then why, why Hindenburg though, specifically? Well, the reasoning for Hindenburg is because her concealment, base concealment, is actually really high. Even with full concealment build, you get about 12km concealment, which 
isn't too good for cruiser standards, heavy cruiser standards. Armor wise, she has 30mm plating. Yeah, exposed bow, but. Exposed bow, but. Plating is 30. And she also gets a German turtleback. Of course, it's it's cruiser turtleback, so not super good, but. It's still there regardless. And also, because of her unique characteristics as a German ship, she has. Um, 51 millimeters of HE pen. So you have basically have IFHE built in. So good damage. Your fire chance is quite not low, 13%. But you get 12 shells. Because you have 12 guns. And with this setup, let's see, where is the artillery? I just missed it. You get a 10 second reload. Which goes even lower. And can go to I think about 8.2. So you become, you get quite a bit of DPM. Alright, so that's the explanations. And now, I will do some, I'll show you a replay that's somewhat, not, it's not really average game, but I guess it's more of a game that it shows what you can expect from this build and from Hindenburg in general. And also shows you what can happen if you have Lighthouse build. So, yeah, without further ado, um, let's go. Alright, so here's the replay. Um, I played this game when Sherman came the day Sherman came out. The morning the Sherman came out. So that's why there's uh, two Shermans on the enemy team. And yeah, so we spawn on A side, so as always, go to your side when you spawn. It is really, really inf it's pretty infuriating when people don't go to their sides. So looking at the matchmaking, 3 GKs, there's a lot of HP, an Ohio and a Yamato. For cruisers, Hindenburg and a Hadomeo, and a Minotaur, not really big concerns. Uh, small ones too, I guess. And then for destroyers, Sherman and Harukumo, again, not very big concerns at all. So in terms of battleships, the only battleships you have to worry about this game is Yamato, and Ohio due to their guns being 457 millimeter or higher which means they overmatch your 30 millimeter plating that Hindenburg has it basically makes your armor irrelevant regardless of angle so just gotta be careful now GK on the other end cannot do that so pretty flexible so what you're gonna be doing most of the time is this you're, you're going to point your stern towards the enemy like this and slowly accelerate forward, accelerate backward, and keep shooting at your battleships. Um, so right now, the build is not working. Well, the top grade is not procced yet, mostly because there's nothing in range. That's kind of due to this map being sort of small. As um, you see, there's not much place for me to run towards too. And I'm kind of just stuck sitting here. And remember, even though the build's meant to be to have your detection within some ship, and that's not too hard with 18 kilometers, don't go kill yourself for damage. <laughs> remember, you are spawned from 18 kilometers away, and you will die very easily if you make mistakes because you can't go dark. So yeah, this is just standard gameplay. This is kind of what you can expect. I'm not doing a very good job of shooting over these islands at the moment, so I apologize for that. But for the most part, you're gonna be sitting like this, start out farming battleships. Um, that's kind of the whole point of the build. <laughs> uh, there are people who get mad when uh, you play farming ships because, well, they just farm damage, right? They just farm big damage numbers. And the argument against it is that they provide no team utility in forms of like radar or destroyer hunting or what, what not. But honestly, for me, I have to say that, well, yes, having capabilities to hunt destroyers and play objectives is nice. However, a lot of the times, you're gonna need a ship that's going to DPM these battleships though. Like, you can call it farming damage, but when the whole point of these ships is to just have 
very very high damage numbers um i don't know like i don't really know what else more you can expect from the hindenburg it's not like hindenburg herself can go off the cruisers or destroyers due to her pretty big stealth kilometers her concealment's not amazing either I, well, I already just said that. Oh, her shell works are not amazing either, like Russian ships. They're kind of slow. So, yeah, Hindenburg's entire point really is just this damage farmer. So why not just increase its damage farmer capabilities? So this is where it gets more interesting when the GK start pushing up. Right now, it's been kind of like whatever, just farming long range. Uh, you know, it happens though because of the state of the game so far early game you know people were more reluctant to push here though we see this gk pushed up and if you look at my next to my consumables you see the top grade gunner proc and that's because well there's the gk within 18 kilometers right now and that gk is just spotted the entire game which he will be because we have our delny over there um this gk will provide me a percent reload boost the entire game so increase my dpm which is nice So a very very um uninteresting game so far <laughs> but it is what it is it happens oh interesting gk pushes up so yeah when battleships decide to push out this is when you shine the most hindenburg also works very well especially with light well normal hindenburg work can do this too but light build really loves it when battleships push into you a lot of ships do right but if they push into you they make it so you get to control the engagement and you get to farm them down very easily and if you see there the gk did a thousand three hundred fifty damage that's an overpen that's due to our turtle back armor and due to our dirty millimeter attack meaning he can't just punch straight through now i have to admit we are kind of unlucky with the fires or so far um two fires is Pretty bad for 90 shell hits. Oh, there we go. Just have to ask, right? The stuff you have to look out for. Uh, keep track of your shell hits. 140 is when you get the reload buff, so it's really nice to get that really early. So far, we haven't really had much to shoot at yet, so not really that much shell hits. Most of the time you want to be like this you want to be reversing towards the enemy the reasoning is because you're kind of a larger ship you're not like so you don't turn super quickly even though you have rather shift mod um, your turning radius is pretty average so you don't want to be caught broadside even if you do have turtle back so basically you don't want to be game returning as much as <laughs> people joke about game returns and stuff i do it all the time too just for fun but it will get you killed in hindenburg especially with lighthouse build due to the fact that well you're just going to be spotted from everywhere so yeah just some stuff to be careful about so far yeah game's just been damage farming 80k 85k from both gks standard stuff i guess another downside with this build is um actually it's not really a downside actually but your average damage will go up by playing this if you play correctly just due to the nature of the ship and how you play it where you fire HG at battleships the entire game um remember you always want to conserve your hp at least in random battles because there are times when you're gonna need that hp in this game i will probably i will need that hp actually so that's why i'm not going to charge these two gks no point still gonna be kited out i used a spotter plane here just to get a better view of that gk because i wasn't really too sure what he was exactly doing there we get the lujin's proc um he dies so now we only have about 40k damage to farm with the gk but he's probably gonna die very quickly as well we were really lucky in this match to have um, battleships that push because a lot of the times battleships don't push 
and it makes it really hard to play cruisers when they don't push especially if your cruiser trying to use island cover you're just not gonna have a great time playing against these battleships thankfully for us they pushed so we get our damage So here it shows the downside of Hindenburg. It's not really the lighthouse build, but just Hindenburg in general. Um, Hindenburg is 31.5 knots base, which is pretty bad, as you're gonna take a long time to get anywhere. If you see where we are on the map, we're really far away from the ships right now. We can't trace the Sherman or the, the Hindenburg, they're way too far away. So we have to go back for the Yamato, Ohio, but it's gonna take a while to get there. Also here, I just take some paw shots, but they're pretty impossible to hit a Sherman at 22. It's, it's already hard enough to try to hit battleships at this range if they're constantly moving, but <laughs> a destroyer is more than impossible. So here I pop a heal early, just to have another heal on cooldown. That is something you can do if you need to. Um, I know some people like to save heals until the very end of the game, like, not end of the game, but when they have as much HP healable. But for me, there are there are situations where you want the next heal ready closer, even if you're not going to get all of the heals off. Especially in this situation, I have, I was basically on full HP, I just had maybe like 4k, 3k HP to heal, so I just used the heal early just to have it up. Now, in case I take massive damage from the higher the model, which probably will this game looks one so far but we're gonna get a bit more damage on these two battleships Yamato's on full HP I wish I was able to farm him a lot more but unfortunately he just takes a lot of damage from everything else this case, since they're chasing the thunder over there, I don't want to be pointed towards them because they're going to switch to me the next time once he dies. So I just want to be kited out, angled, and firing at the battleships. Thunder finally goes down, and now we have these two battleships to deal with. As you can see, the HE Alpha is not very good, especially on saturated targets because your HE just does such little damage. Except we are getting a good chunk of pen damage, kind of some unlucky uh, non-pens, but happens. So here, I think I get shot by the Ohio. Yep. He shoots. I accelerate forward. That's a mistake. I should have kept reversing. But see, I'm angled away. And how much damage? Yeah, 10k. <laughs> that is due to the overmatch that I was talking about earlier. He will overmatch you, your 30mm deck. So it becomes really tough to play against battleships that can do that to you. Um, if you're not too careful. So there, I, I made the mistake in juking. So, I guess he did it, He did do a good shot in predicting my acceleration. This is where range mod is actually very helpful. Um, 
you see like once this while is running away if i didn't have range mod and didn't have spotter up it would be incredibly tough trying to even go after this ohio if he chooses to shoot me that's why i take range mod there are arguments for reload obviously because well it gives you a faster reload and isn't the build supposed to be reload right but i just find the range mod to be so much more useful so this is about what 250 shellets so far and only seven fires sometimes you get really unlucky with the fires but you can still see that we did 145k damage and that's a mixture of the fires and the pen damage that you do with these shells even though the alpha is lower you're gonna get a lot more pens than non-pens especially on most targets most battleships you pen them everywhere maybe not like um well, yeah, you do, because battleships that have less than 50mm decks will get penned everywhere. Every battleship has 32mm bows, so they get penned there too. Um, I guess the only battleship you don't absolutely pen is Kremlin with the 60mm deck. But other than that, it's very, very simple. Now here, I'm just going to skip forward a bit, because nothing happens. <laughs> Alright, here we go. So, we find the Hindenburg over here. See... It takes forever to get places, especially, it's just really, like, the, the slow speed makes it very hard to go anywhere. Now, that can be a blessing and a curse. If you're kiting away at Hindenburg, if you only go 31.5 knots, it can be really, really um, nice to only go slow speeds because um, it means you won't go so far away from the battlefield that you can't return after you're kited away, because that can happen sometimes. But it's also a curse in the fact that, well, you're not going to go anywhere <laughs> very quickly with the slow, slow pace that it goes at. Now, enemy Tindenberg is going to die very quickly here. Kind of makes the uh, mistake of sticking way too close to the cap zone. But again, Hindenburg is super slow, so he might not have even had a choice. I load AP here to see if he turns broadside, but he actually realizes I'm here, so he doesn't um, go full broadside. Hindenburg's AP can be good against broadside targets, it just doesn't have any special properties. It does have high alpha, higher alpha for the AP shells, but nothing else. Now here's Sherman, um, she just released the day I fought her, so I wasn't like too sure what like her DPM numbers were, I just knew she had sap HE. And you can see how quickly I get shredded here, actually. <laughs> it's actually quite funny. Uh, so, so far, she's not doing too much damage because I'm sort of angled away, you know, angled towards her. But as soon as I tried to open up with all of my guns, because I was kind of getting... Uh, my big aim was kind of bad here, so I was trying to want to try to get more shells on her. But yeah, you can see... Um, you, you're going to see how much damage she actually does with those guns. Thankfully, I didn't take too much damage earlier, so I was able to use, um, well, I was able to conserve my HP, which is always what you want to do. As you can see, Sherm uh, Hindenburg shells are not, like, special in the case that, <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> a bit frustrated with that one, but they're not very special in the way that they go faster, they just, um, just have 12 shells. I guess it's more than enough, usually. I was actually getting speed juke by this guy, though, which was pretty frustrating, because, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's just me being bad. But he dies. And that's 170k damage. Anyway. 